we see the uh, turning point in the market, and it really is marked by where we were last year to where we are today. In 2009, when we got together uh, and presented our, our, our approach, our view of the market, we were at, at the absolute bottom from a, from a leasing uh, standpoint as well as an investment sales standpoint. And the first half of 2009 saw virtually no activity. But when we look at the, the second half, it was a, a tale of, of two markets where the second half really began to, to pick up, again, from a very low low, but a significant gain in the market. So we're seeing a turning point, it's all a real inflection point last year, from uh, an activity standpoint where more people are beginning to act while there was a, the sort of the, the deer in the headlights at the beginning of last year. People, once the, the new president came in and the plans were put in place, began to act once they knew that the economy wasn't going to fall further and was going to turn and that the stimulus was being put in play, were beginning to act and to take action, extend leases and look for opportunities. But where we are today, we've got a tremendous uh, fundamental market imbalance with rents declining, vacancies still going up as job growth hasn't come back to the market. We see that changing over the next few years, so we look at 2010 and 2011 for the corporate occupier to be a tremendous time to lock, lock in long-term leases and take advantage of this real estate market, either if they're a buyer of, of assets to look to develop for, on their own account or to reposition their portfolio to move up to a higher quality space or to, to either consolidate and extend their space, getting tremendous uh, concessions and uh, lease terms for the long term today versus what they might be able to do when their lease expires in two or three years. But if they can lock in today, they're going to find that they, they've locked in at a, a low point in the marketplace. There, there's opportunities today in all sectors. We, we see that the, the office market probably was was hardest hit from a percentage uh, decline in rental value, so there's the biggest opportunities there. But for the retailer, we're seeing spaces that weren't available before becoming available. So it's a location issue there, maybe not so much a, a value issue, where being able to enter markets that a retailer wasn't able to enter before because there was so much demand, so much uh, competition for certain spaces that you know, we look at now being a time to enter new markets to begin to saturate a market or extend the footprint because of the uh, the opportunities that, that may not exist again. So you have one, an availability issue, and on the other, a, a, a value play on the on the office side. Industrial, you know, it could be that that begins to turn quickest actually from a uh, an absorption standpoint, as there's not as much of an oversupply there as in other markets, and as the the distribution and logistics and the global marketplace begin to uh, recharge as the economy emerges, that seems to be gaining significant demand and we're seeing that uh, to, to probably tighten fastest in the market. Yeah. From the investment standpoint, if we're looking at that, we would we would suggest that uh, the multifamily market probably the most interesting today uh, due to the uh, what we look at as a short-term lease cycle. So while rents might have gone down the fastest there, they can also increase the fastest on the other side. And what's interesting is we look around the world, we see the U.S. actually lagging from a real estate performance standpoint. Opportunities that exist here don't exist anymore in, in Asia and in, in many parts of Europe, where those markets came back much faster, whether it was from their, their economic growth in uh, the Asian region, particularly fueled by China, or by just the fundamental demand and a currency play in London, there, there's been a, a much more active and robust real estate market there versus the United States. So we're lagging. So from an investor standpoint, it seems like there's a, a almost an arbitrage or a mismatch uh, that we could take advantage of here. And with the high vacancy levels and the low rentals still here, clearly at a turning point, there's a wonderful opportunity to, uh, to take advantage of.